More than 60 years after the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, ensuring respect for human rights continues to be a struggle. For many people around the world, across all continents, enjoying fundamental freedoms, a life free from violence, and access to education, food and water are not a given. Human rights defenders play a key role in the promotion and protection of human rights. They work to raise awareness of human rights, monitor and document violations, and bring cases to court, often at the peril of their own lives. A human rights defender can be a Rwandan peace activist or a US domestic violence advocate, a Russian journalist or a lawyer in Argentina. Human rights defenders are active at many different levels, in many contexts and in many areas. From children's rights to the rights of minorities or indigenous peoples, from civil and political rights to economic, social and cultural rights. Margaret Sekagia, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Human Rights Defenders, has found that some 11 years after the adoption of the Declaration on Human Rights Defenders, insecurity remains and defenders are still at risk. The daily lives of defenders are affected by threats, intimidation, arrests, detention and harassment because of their peaceful work for the promotion, protection and implementation of human rights. Because defenders need to be better equipped to defend themselves and the precious work they do for others, and because sometimes acting at the domestic level simply isn't enough, there is a need to provide capacity building to human rights defenders who wish to have their voice heard at the international or regional level. This means giving them adequate training and advice to build upon their skills and knowledge to strategically call upon the UN or regional human rights systems to address their concerns. International Service for Human Rights was created in 1984 with the purpose of supporting national human rights defenders in their daily work. They are expert in promoting and protecting human rights in their national context, but there is an added dimension to their work through the UN Human Rights Mechanism and we are providing them with access to those mechanisms, to a full understanding of how they operate and how they as human rights defenders can better engage with these mechanisms. And we do that to some extent in their home countries, but most commonly here in Geneva. There has an added value that they can actually travel here and meet the, the UN staff and the UN, and the UN personnel that actually work on these mechanisms and engage directly with the players here and get a hands-on experience and fully understand how, how they operate. And they also work with the International Service to develop their own action projects that they will implement once they go back to their countries. And we, as the International Service for Human Rights, continue in contact with them and help them in their pursuit of, of engaging effectively with the UN system. Using the UN system for the promotion and protection of human rights should never be a, a goal in itself. Rather, it can complement the efforts and the work that human rights defenders are already undertaking at, uh, at the national level in, in their domestic context. One element of the strategy to improve the human rights situation in a, in a given context can be to exert pressure on the government. And using the UN system can assist human rights defenders in those efforts. Engaging with the UN system also allows human rights defenders to learn from the experiences of others. In this way they can adapt or, or change and improve their own strategies for how they undertake their work. ISHR provides defenders with the necessary training, information products and strategic advice to choose those opportunities and to take the strategic decisions of when and how to engage with the UN system. ICT training is not only in Geneva, but uh, we also organize training at regional and national level. And the objective of this training is to bring both international and regional system to the to defenders, to explain them how both systems work and also to give them the opportunity to choose which system is more suitable to address the issues in their region. Um, the advantage of our training at the national and regional level is that we try really to adapt this training on the need of uh, defenders at the national level and uh, 
We don't have any specific agenda on this kind of training uh, at the regional level. It's sometimes the defenders themselves who request this training and based on their need. So what we try to do is to really to bring the international and regional system and to try to see how their specific needs can be addressed through using this international and regional system. And uh, another advantage is also that it's helped also a lot of defenders to be able to attend to this training because Geneva costs a lot and but at the regional level we can be able to use the same fund to bring like 30 participants that can benefit from this training. The concrete outcome of our regional and national training are this year in May the civil society in Rwanda were able to lobby the African Commission to address the issues of human rights violation in Rwanda during the review of Rwanda by this human rights system. In uh, December 2009, the civil society in TRC were able also to actively participate to the examination of their country by the UPR mechanism. And this year, in March, the civil society in Guinea also were able to participate actively in the review of their country through lobbying in Guinea and also in Geneva here. I'd like to talk a little bit about the methodology that we employ within our training courses. Um, we believe that uh, the participants on our training courses come with a wealth of experience and expertise which we wish to harness within our training courses to a deeper processing of the knowledge and make it more relevant to them and also to grant them a bigger ownership over their own learning. How we do this is we carry out a thorough learning needs assessment where we see what their learning needs are and what their offers are as well. So, uh, for example, the participants can uh, deliver testimonies on their own experiences of engaging with the UN system and their, and their work in human rights. We also use uh, simulations and role plays and case studies in order to facilitate a more interactive learning. We also want our participants who are on our training courses to employ the same methodology in order to cascade their learning when they go back to uh, their areas of work. So I've conducted train the trainer courses, basically interactive methodologies, uh, how to plan, how to evaluate the um, participants' skills and needs, and how to monitor and evaluate their progress as well. In our training courses, we have participants from all over the world. Chile, Myanmar, Australia, Cameroon, Belgium, Guyana, Indonesia, Malawi, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, our selection process is based on uh, very strict criteria. Uh, first of all, participants need to be working for NGOs who use the international human rights system or who are at least willing to use it. Also, our participants have to be in the, at least in the middle management of their organizations since there are some decisions which, which need to be taken in terms of follow-up and implementing the acquired knowledge. ISHR has trained more than 300 human rights defenders from all parts of the world over the past three years. We've seen how they've successfully engaged with the UN human rights system by submitting information to the treaty bodies, the universal periodic review, and engaging with the special procedures. We've also seen how they've integrated international human rights law and recommendations from the UN into their work uh, at the national level. The training courses have also been an excellent opportunity for us to meet human rights defenders from all over the world and learn about their work. After the trainings, ISHR has engaged in follow-up activities with a number of participants. This has included additional trainings at the national level. We've also been able to develop sustained long-term partnerships with a number of former participants. ISHR would like to thank all the human rights defenders who have come from near and far to attend our training courses. We feel privileged to have been able to help you in your incredibly courageous and valuable work. You have been an inspiration to us all.